my name is Devin Chase. I'm a chef here at Anateca Nostrana. Um, conceptualizing the menu was pretty easy. I had a lot of influence from Kathy and the chef over next door at Nostrana, Brian Murphy. Um, basically what we wanted to do was create uh, a small cocktail wine lounge to be adjacent to the big classic Italian restaurant that's Nostrana. Um, so this is sort of our answer to that big family style, like big plating Italian. What we're doing is a little smaller, a little more refined. So you should come in here, have a nice glass of wine um, and a light snack, and then go over there and get your bistecca or your pork chop or sort of larger thing. So over here we're doing like really fun snacks, a lot of heavy seafood elements, um, stuff like that. And I grew up in the Yakima Valley, which is uh, in Washington State, which is extremely agricultural. Um, but not a lot of the food that's grown there stays there and the people actually eat. So even my family, we raised pigs and other animals and like did a lot of butchery and stuff like that ourselves. Uh, but that was kind of unique to the area. So my family itself produced its own meat, but then we would eat pretty terribly otherwise. Really processed foods and a lot of Chef Boyardee <laughs> and things like that. And that's sort of what got me cooking is that sort of disconnect always surprised me in that this amazing agricultural place and then not a lot of access to it other than what we did ourselves at home. Um, so that kind of sparks a little, little nerdy interest in me and food. Um, my mother's a terrible cook. <laughs> so uh, I would often like make my sister and I like a sneak dinner before she got home. Sorry mom, but <laughs> uh, she made some baked macaroni and cheese and she still makes really good potato salad. That I miss. She makes a mean, mean mom style potato salad, that's for sure. Um, yeah, and I guess where I grew up, there's a really strong Hispanic culture. The tacos, the food truck tacos, I miss those. <laughs> those are really outstanding. So. Um, here in Portland, we're lucky enough, I think, that that's pretty regular and pretty mainstream to have that at that food accessible. Um, so I don't think it's Portland so much isn't going back to it. We've sort of been on the forefront of that, that farm to table, which is great. But I definitely have seen like in the small community that I'm from a, a better connection in that way. And like I certainly haven't had much to do with that unfortunately. But um, I do think it's finally coming around and people are really realizing like there's this amazing produce we're growing right here. Like we can eat that too. You know, instead of just shipping it out. Uh, I consider myself genderqueer, so I don't necessarily identify strictly as a female chef. And for me personally, like this is a question I've been asked many times, um, I think it's different. I think gendering food is kind of asinine, you know, and like I think that I'm a chef and that chefs can have varying foods because I make something delicate doesn't make it female and because I make something like a big ass pork chop doesn't make it masculine, you know? And so for me, I've sort of found something in between. Like I sort of identify myself in that. So I've had, I've had a pretty good time. I mean, there's always gonna be that chauvinist <laughs> around. Um, and I think that everyone has to deal with that personality and that sort of demeanor. And I've been lucky enough to come up um, in very sweet kitchens and very non-gender conforming kitchens, which has been really important. And so, like, here in Nostrana, it's not really a problem if somebody is sort of this, like, ego of any kind, masculine or feminine, they don't really last very long. And that's sort of what I want to keep around myself when I look for in my staff, too, is that it's not this male versus female or this gender identifying anything. It's just, like, you're a sweet person and you cook food, <laughs> you know, and that's how... That's how it should be, and I think that we, especially here, are really striving for that. So I hope other people are starting to have that same experience, you know, and I'm doing what I can to help it, I guess. Any working chef struggles to find that balance. Right now, I could really use a nap. <laughs> you know, I'm finding that right now. So the balance, especially since we're so new on the Enoteca side, um, I mostly work. I'm working, working, working. But, you know, on my weekends, I go to the river, I hang out with my family, I try to, like, make the most of it in the little free time that I do get. And I'm obsessed with food, so this is kind of my, my fun also in this. The passion I'm finding and, like, the ability to sink into food has been really comforting. It kind of gives me a reprieve from all of that. Um, you know, I mean, today's a good day. We're having the alt-right 
protest downtown and it's like as much as my mind is there and concerned it's like I'm so busy and I have to stay so focused on today because we have a huge busy service coming up um, so you know it's like that it's easy for me to keep my passions in there and it only helps as a distraction and where I might get buried down in our political climate and feeling depressed about that I also wander to snacks and food and that becomes my happy place and then I try to execute that and make that show up in my menu if I can. Man, I mean I'd love to do some more raw foods out of here. Eventually I want um, a lot of raw seafood coming out of here and like on the east coast you see those huge seafood towers and stuff like that. I'd love to have a level of business to do some refined sort of raw elements and like really fun seafood stuff. So we've definitely, our Anapasta de Mare um, plate is probably where most, most of my efforts are going to right now. That and the Ortolano, our vegetables. I don't know, that's what I've been kind of nerding out about and really sinking into. Um, and in my personal life, just like, yeah, I've been trying to eat as much like sushi and I don't know, I'm just kind of obsessed right now with the heat and all that like fresh, cold kind of food. For me, I think it's just in also showing that food respect and letting it do its work. You know, I try not to cover up a lot of the hard work that the farmers and producers of this food are doing with a lot of like, I don't know, extra technique if, if that's what you want to call it. I mean, I've got some technique, but um, I try to keep it pretty simple and like the nice thing about Italian food is it gives you a platform to do that and really showcase what the farmers are doing. Like one of our plates, um, our vegetable antipasti, the Ortolano, is all inspired by a farm. Like I pick one of the farmers and try to take all of the produce um, that they're coming in or something that I really like that they're bringing in and I really showcase that on a plate and try not to cover it up with too much. Um, you know, and I think people, that's what they want to taste. They want that tomato to be super sweet and like the perfect texture. I don't think they want me to cover it up in some kind of sauce or make a foam out of it or something like that, you know? So I just try to keep it pretty simple and make sure the flavors are interesting and like really bright. Personally, I think that I'm right in that, like where I would like to be opening my own restaurant and taking that next step, I do feel like it's become harder and less realistic for me to to make that next step. Um, unfortunately, I see a lot of restaurant groups opening up and taking away sort of the opportunity for independent chefs to succeed in that way. And so I'm super nervous about the future of our food culture and if it's gonna become like a really fancy strip mall, if that, you know. Um, but I also think the answer to that too, you're also seeing all of these amazing pop-ups and all of these creative chefs are just finding different ways to to come up and do their own thing. And it's, it's harder than it used to be, I think, but I think you're also getting more creativity out of that from those people. So you get that weird pop-up that's happening out of a corner of a bar somewhere, but you might have the most delicious bite you've ever had, and they're playing something weird on the screen because the other bar is doing that, or, you know, that kind of thing. So, I don't, I really don't know. I think people are still trying to fight the good fight and be independent chefs and not go corporate or a restaurant group, but I think that it's hard. Um, I think it's going to be interesting. It's definitely hard to staff people. Um, the wage increase, although it's super important and I think needed, is going to affect small businesses in a negative way uh, unless we figure out a different system. So I think we're about to see a big mix up in the restaurant industry and maybe a little little revolt in that too, hopefully, where we all start doing our own thing no matter what. Um, Portland's great and there's so many opportunities here and there's so many spaces that are created for people to do their pop-ups and people willing to give that sort of young chef a shot. Um, so I think Portland's great. It's a great atmosphere for that. I think that a lot is changing here and this is a completely different industry than it was even five years ago. Um, but you know, I think we're doing it. I think Portland, we're definitely still on the map and I think there's amazing food being produced by young people and new people to the scene as well as the old. I mean, 
there's so many classic, amazing chefs here. It's, it's hard to say. Food is good. It's going to continue to be good. People want to eat. It's, it's a bit of what our culture is, you know, even though America doesn't have culture, if that makes sense, of its own. I think eating is universal, and I think that's obviously never going to go away, and it makes people feel good, so I think we're going to be fine. I mean, you know, I think professionally it's super important for me. It kind of goes back to that topic on gender and, like, kindness in the kitchen. I think that that's incredibly important for me is to run a nice atmosphere and a sweet and as safe as I can make it atmosphere for people to be creative and learn and find a skill that they maybe didn't know they had or a passion that they maybe didn't know they had. I think in the industry, we get a lot of misfits. We get a lot of people that, I mean, that's how I got in here. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing and I fell into wood fire cooking and just fell in love with the big old wood fire oven. Um, and found a lot of passion in that. And I think you can see people come in and find that passion and to give, you know, some shy little weirdo a shot and like find their voice, I think it's really important. So I think professionally, I wanna make good food. I wanna have a business of my own that's successful, that I don't have to kill myself working. Um, and I want it to be run by really sweet people. And I wanna create that environment where people can come up and learn and not feel excluded because of like, age, gender, race, sexuality, any of that, and I think that's the professional legacy that I'd like to leave, in addition to making some awesome food, you know, like obviously I want to be known a little for my food, but I think there's so much more that goes into restaurants and, and cooking that it's important to facilitate that if you can, if you're privileged enough to do that. So that's what I want to do professionally, and I think in my personal life too. I just want to be nice and have a good time, <laughs> and um, yeah, make my own way if I can. I think that's the big goal. Not work myself to death, but create something and, and do it well.